welcome back everyone to Equestria Warm. I'm your host, Mr. Mokulover. And now we have the Assemblée Nationale d'Aquilia. The National Assembly is the natural result of the revolution. 400 deputies representing all corners of Aquilia and their political tendencies in a proportional and fair manner. Much like our nation itself, the Assembly is deeply divided ideologically. But the revolutionary spirit of our democracy lives on and represent representatives are more than willing to join us in unorthodox coalitions across party lines. On the other claw, this also means that the president cannot expect full legislative support from his own party. <clears throat> Blind obedience is a lot of fun, but is a monarchic idea of politics anyway. So, what we're all been waiting for. I asked you guys at the end of last episode, <clears throat> which route we should go. And I waited until 10 o'clock at night to make this video, just to get all of your input. <clears throat> There's support for every single candidate here, whether the PAT, the FJA, the NPA, and the PNDA, but ultimately there's there's almost an equal amount of support for the either you know the left path, the communist or a socialist path, as well as the other side for harmony. So here's my deal to you guys, <clears throat> and I hate to do this one or do this, but if we get this video to 75 likes, I will do all four paths. I will do all four paths for the Aquilian Re Republic. You hold me to that promise. If we get 75 likes, I will do all four paths. But overall, at the time of this recording, ultimately, there's just a, just the ever small, so small support for the party that is the FJA. So, no matter what happens, I'm not going to be able to please everybody. And we're now led by Cecile Gaudreau. Very cool. And this is, greetings, Madame la Présidente. This is the National Assembly, of course, which still affects itself over here. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, you can work with different political forces, but your main goal is to expand ruling party support by curtailing the members or numbers of opponents and involving the members of your faction. Remember that the max support value is limited to the current party popularity. In order to maintain your political strength, you should keep an eye on coalition detractions, decisions, and make the appropriate decision every 60 days. So, we'll see what we can do. Probably foreign policy. Probably not too interested in that right now. But since we did, we did go down this one route, we can reach across party lines. Convince five other people to support the president. Just people well, support the president. We get more political power, less consumer goods. Not bad. Commission de Electrification Rural, which is not bad for more recruitable population factor. Civilian factory construction speed in, in cities. Nice. And modernize the labor laws. Uh, well, alienate f quite a few deputies as well. Col du travail. Oh boy. More harmony support as well as battle illiteracy. Ooh, ooh, evil illiteracy here? Legacy of Coltbert. Um, oh, unless it's down here. Is it down here? Oh, it's down here. Okay. So this will eventually go away. Yeah. Sorry, I'm used to that being a national spirit instead. So, cool. That's actually not really good to have. You know what? We'll do that one first then. Ignorance is a tool of tyrants, the weapon of warlords. Knowledge is a foundation that freedom rests upon. We shall make it our endeavor to reach and teach griffins all throughout the Republic how to read and learn so they may become effective participants in our new and everlasting democracy. Very cool. Oh, it's a 40-day focus, so not too bad. And apparently we're training a lot of guys here too, which isn't too bad either. All right, so we got to... Ooh, look at that. Yes, please. Focus on our total support. So this button obviously went back to here. And I like the shape, the shape of this pony. No, I like the look of what... Is that female? Anyways, so FJA supports, that's hard me. So with a support of 150 deputies, we have minus 3.7% stability. Weekly st oh, weekly stability goes down. Oh, we better do something now. Uh, coalition detractions. Effects if not selected within 47 days, 25 ram random deputies will detract from us. Oh, that's not good. We probably need to take that then. That's gonna be political power. Do we whip the party for 3% political, uh, for three percent stability? Poach deputies. Ooh, how much support do we have for here? So. The max amount we can have right now would be our popu party popularity, which is 39%. Which still isn't bad, but... You know what? Let's try that one first. Here's our, oh. Wow. That looks not very good. Lost in translation. Today, <clears throat> a controversy has rocked the National Assembly, and the session had to be suspended. Foreign journalists were puzzled as Victor Allard, the traveler's firebrand, was yelled at for calling the Second Republic the Second Republic. Many correspondents simply poked fun at the controversy. Conservative and communist leading reporters had a fire field day ridiculing the event as either a proof of Republican incompetence or as an incomprehensible attack on the travelers. Ice Cream Scoop, the Manhattan Herald correspondent, was the first to make sense of the situation for outside observers. Having attended the session and speaking perfect aqua... aqua uh, Aquilian, having been raised in Pridea, she explained in her piece that the controversy was real, not a simple joke. Aquilian has two words for second... Dem oh, Dome, 
and second. And while the latter have been used by all the pol politicians to describe the current republic, Allard used the former. The controversy sparked from a subtle nuance to say second, seconde republique means that there have been only two republics and it carries the idea that there won't be any more. Doeme doesn't have any idea of that meaning and simply states that something is second in a series. Effectively, Allard implied that the current Republic had an expiry, expiration date or expiring date, symbolically attacking the legitimacy of the current regime. Maybe we should find more language lessons. Oh, there goes communism. Oh boy. Uh, I guess we have to click this anyways. Alright, well, we'll do that one. We'll try that out. Ooh, the build table. I want to make sure we get more party support. Uh, deputies will be convinced to join us some more. Yeah, why not? We like that, right? Oh, weekly stability. I don't like that. Oh, man. Oh, Tarden asked for diplomatic recognition. The Separatists in Tarden, who recently gained their independence from the county of Francistria, have sent us a diplomatic envoy asking for the newborn nation to be recognized by our government as a sovereign country. Accepting this request would mean that we not only acknowledge your independence as legal, but also enables us to form friendly ties with the young country. However, doing so would also likely anger some Francistrians, who may think that Tarin is a rightful part of the nation, not only that, but justifying the military occupation of an area is much easier if you do not recognize it as a legal entity. And in the end, does Griffonia truly yet need another tiny state that they can hardly sustain itself? Maybe, we'll see. So this is Tarin. Oh, they have a really nice flag. A really nice flag. Menyad Nosere, National Hero. Recognize your independence should not be independent at all. Huh. They are harmonious, too, and they join the Republic. Oh. <clears throat> a Tardinian delegation has arrived in our capital, led by none other than Meinhard Nosere, the leader of the local Republican movement. They formally pre presented us the request to be annexed into the Second Aquilian Republic, as long as Tardin receives political autonomy and cultural protections. Cecilia Gaudreau has graciously accepted the proposal, and the process to integrate the region has begun. Tardin was once a county subject to the discreet monarchy, but the count was overthrown in, in 980. Already back then, Maynard Nocere won the elections and wished to join the fellow revolutionaries in Aquila, or Aquila, but before that could be done, the Franciscans invaded. Now, at last, after so many years of separation, Tarnin can rejoin the Fatherland. Hurrah! Well, bad words! Okay, then. Alright, we gotta do that one, then. Wow, that is... Uh, there's not cord, which really sucks, but since we technically are Harmony... We do get local autonomy, so I'm not really worried about that then. And since we're here, garrisons, I guess this will be our garrison uh, little group here, so. Not bad, I'd have to say so myself. Oh, Garnison. Garnison. Um, these divisions probably aren't too bad. What do you get Mountaineers? How's our Mountaineers? 12 combat with these guys are worse, actually, so I don't even bother one looking at that. Nope. Nope. There you go. Convert you to this, since we're out of equipment, so be it. And you should be led by Gilles Lafitte. Ah, we like being a little Lafitte. Um, okay, well, there you go. Good luck, train. Hopefully we don't get attacked. I don't know what's going to happen, but Jean, looking very nice. Scavenger, we might use that one, though. All right. Oh, wow. Le Ordre Nouveau. Whoa. Unite. Whoa, we got a lot here. An Os Grafinian state? Whoa. Military options? Oh, yeah, that's true. We could spend some of this, so... We need 50 army XP to do this. Um, is it not really worth it? Yep, we'll do it anyways. Nice. Military training. I do want to save some of our PP for this. 100 support. Not bad. Okay, so we can do this again. The National Archive. Civil in fact, we use more political power gain. Effects is remove where the nation's memories lies. Um, okay, so we have a little bit more support for now, which is nice as well. Um... I would say that the maximum support is limited to the current party popularity. Maybe we want to wait and get some more. Is it possible to get more harmony support? Daily harmony support? Maybe not. I like Paul because because he's a 10% political power. But then again, we've already tried that twice in this campaign already. It didn't really work very well for us already. So, legally abolish monarchy. We get mage companies. And an extra research slot. Oh, we need 200 deputies though. Ooh. Reach across party lines. We do get more harmony support there as well. I like the stability, but the monarchy? Well, I guess we might as well. Everything we do as a republic must have a basis in our laws and constitution. This includes removing the last vestiges of the monarchy and embracing democracy. Though we topple their discredits through force and bloody revolution, their end cannot truly be made real until the ink drives on our new constitution. The monument? Uh, we do get some political power. I'm not sure this is worth doing. I want to try at least the Aquilian National Archive. 
Hmm. Um, Stalingrad and Artown, very cool. Riverlands, Asterion, cool. The Little Fledging Dispute. A strange controversy has erupted regarding the future of or figure of Bannerlot, the or Banneriot. The whale-like fledgling, symbol of the revolution, has been enshrined in various places at Quilia. The Ministry of Culture sought to use this and launched a contest to design an official design for Banneria. Two drawings made the final cut, but the jury remains decidedly split over it. The first image is in direct line of the well-known Banneriot as an angry fledgling yelling for freedom, however. He's been drawn with a very wild attitude and in a way that some feel a bit out of place now that the revolution seeks to transition into normalcy. The second one is drawn in a much more different manner. That version has been made to look much more proud, triumphant, and somewhat older. He carries his flag not as a rebel, but as a proud defender of his homeland. It has been criticized as, as at odds with the idea of a righteous anger, but he has his supporters as a more mature incarnation of the Republic. They have been nicknamed the Wild Banneriot and the Proud Banneriot. The proud or wild debate has spilled over into the general public. While both incarnations, incarnations have the supporters in all factions, the wild Banneriot has found a stronger support amongst the Travelers and the Mouvement Patriot de Aquilia, while the proud Banneriot is being championed by the Front des Jeunes Aquilia and Parti National de Aquilia. Prefer the former? Um, I prefer the latter. Probably for the latter for us for now. That'd probably make a little bit more sense. I don't want to lose weekly stability though, man. I want to keep doing this stuff, but... Oh, how much... Oh, that's not a bad one. Not bad, not bad. You know what? Third time's a charm for this working. You know, it's probably a bad idea to do this. It's probably a bad idea. We'll do it anyways. I hope I didn't make another mistake. I might just have made another mistake. <laughs> ah, we'll see what happens though, right? The, a great quill sees this to write. Oh, no. All right, so it's 1,008. Do we have anything over here? Not yet. We're still pretty early on in this campaign, which is good. And construction speed. Jules, Jules Favel <laughs> has returned to Aquilia today. Many Republicans fondly remember him as a daring adventurer who wrote extensively about his dream of a revolution and his struggle in the name of the Republican cause. Despite the failure of the first revolutionary era, he kept his commitment to the Republican cause, following Kemmer Kemmersky into Cloudbury, and from there to the cold Scandinavia, where he wrote extensively about the hopes of communism. Now the motherland of Fauvel welcomes him back, draped in the splendor of the successful Second Revolution. Sadly, he has declined many invitations to join our other groups or other great thinkers in Aquila. Instead, he has left to his home near Vinovia. Some journalists and friends traveled to the old Fauvel farm and asked about him. He answered that he was ending his literary work, saying that all that should be written by my claw has been. I dare not venture beyond. The cryptic answer was followed by the announcement that he would now focus on painting to show the rural marvels of his homeland. A shame, but the hot or the art has its reasons that reason ignores. Oh. And can we beat people up? Uh, this stuff is okay. We can go back and come back to that later on. I would like to get some more daily army XP. Um, you know what? You guys aren't doing anything. Just in case, since we extended our border just a wee bit more, how about y'all hang out? And the tanky boys? Well, if these guys want to attack us in France, this area. Let's do what we can. Where do the nation's memories lie? Oh, more divisions. Beautiful. There you go. The Assemblée Nationale is making great strides in crafting legislation to establish a national administration of the archives and protection of the national heritage. While the legislation itself has been largely consensual, uh, the debate has bogged down due to the matter of the archives' location. Many deputies have tried to push for the seat of the administration to be set outside of the capital as originally intended. The proposal of another seat, first initiated by the deputy of Rilla, has transformed into a true chaos as deputies from everywhere tried to push for another location. Over time, deputies eventually coalesced around certain locations, Aquila itself, Rilla, Vinovia, and, surprisingly enough, Vanguardigo. The last suggestion has been particularly popular among deputies from the rural con... Oh, oh. Circumscriptions, but has the downside of not having the prestige of the, of the other locations. The deputies are now calling for the president to break the time. Minovia? Vanguardigo? Rila it is. And the capital do fine. Uh, we'll do Van. Wait, was it the right one to do? Ah, whatever. It is what it is. And then, uh, do we have deputies? Yes, we do. Declaration de exception et des droits civils de ponies. I took one year of French in high school, and that was over a decade ago. For as long as anyone can remember, Aquilia has maintained a sizable pony minority throughout its lands, with the ponies acting as a support base for the discrete monarchy. In order to get them on our side, and share the re our revolutionary fraternity with them, we shall pass an official declaration, ensuring that ponies are full citizens of a republic and have the same rights as any griffon. Very nice. We lose some support, but whatever. We get major companies. The act of abolition. 
Today, the Act of Abolition was formally signed into law in the Aquilian Constitution, ending the centuries-long rule of the monarchy and enshrining the republic and democracy as an essential part of the reborn nation. While well, mostly a ceremonial act, as their heir to the throne, Vivian Descartes is nowhere to be found. Many in the general public consider this to be the start of a new era for Aquilia. Newspapers from all over the nation are holding this as a sign that the Republic is here to stay this time, and all major political parties of Aquilia have voiced their support for the President's lightest act. Finally, the oppressive system that has ruled over the country for so long has truly met its well-deserved end. Long live the Republic. Nice. Oh, oh, uh, detractions? Ooh. That costs pee, pee We don't like that. Oh, poached deputies? Oh, we can't do that one yet. Oh, we need more... Oh, oh no, we need more stability. Gather the assembly. Okay. Construct the monument? Ah, uh, we might as well do that one. Eh, we might as well, right? The Vizima Strikes Memorial. The Vizima Strikes that ended in a bloodbath have been a controversial event for a long time. Even within our revolutionary movements, some people saw the actions of the strikers as understandable but misguided and ultimately harmful to the cause of the strike. The debate has now turned and it is now understood that the Vizima Strike was only an early step in our proletarian revolution. Oh. Shedding tears over the murder of robber barons such as Charles de Vasse's only makes sense within the restraints of the bourgeois morality. The de Vasse's mansion has recently been acquired by the state after the arrest of Jeanne de Vasse's. The heiress of the de Vasse's fortune has been modified and refurbished to become a maison du peuple, a cultural place where all workers will be free to meet and enjoy the best that the workers' spirit has to offer. A memorial dedicated to the strikers bearing the name of all strikers killed during the repression of the strike and also the name of the poor servants who joined the striker during the hostage taking of de Vasse's and were massacred by the police along the line of the heroes. We will remember the heroes of Visa. Uh, uh, Vizima. Vizima. Pretty good. Actually, we're doing quite well. Uh, we have 210 support, which is pretty darn nice. Stability's looking pretty good. Weekly stability is still negative, though, which is not very good, but not bad. I would, as I said before, like to get daily army XP. Darn, we can't we can't gain the system here. Arrgh. And, uh, you know, get more daily. This is actually really nice. Compliance growth speed is actually really, really nice. I'll, we'll probably go for this one. I want to get more daily harmony support, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So, which, which, which way? Which way? we going down? Naval. Let's see. Air. I guess this is the only one. Agent Don Quilt. And then, uh, do, ooh, we do have enough deputies. Acad Academie Republicaine de Sciences. Free from the yoke of tyranny. Our finest scientists and most brilliant minds are now allowed to research as they please and teach future generations of innovative griffins with lavish funding from the Republic soon. Aquilia will feature the greatest scientific academy in all of the world. And we have another research slot done. Nice. Let's get some of that cap. And then maybe we'll focus a little bit more on, well, maybe we'll start focusing on our land doctrine, which would be a very, very good. Whip the party. Whip, whip. I kind of like that one. Um, poach deputies. No. Okay, then. Hmm. We'll defect from our coalition. Oh. But we do lower communism, which we want... If we're going to lower anybody, it'd be the biggest faction, which is actually the supremacists right now. So we'd actually probably whip some supremacists, which sounds weird to say, but that sounds kind of cool, actually. The table bill. Oh, let's do this one just in case first. That's fine. The table bill. Huh. Loose book of art. Let's try that one. Let's see what happens. It's 30 day focus. That's okay. We're still building up some millies, actually, huh? Instead of civvies. Oh, the guide Deshimen, Deshimens. Oh, we're actually doing that too, huh? Okay, cool. Actually, are we lacking anything besides planes? Uh, we're going to need probably a lot more artillery where we're headed. So, let's do that. And then... But quite a few early fighters too, so. Today, a peculiar new book hit the shelf, simply named Guide de Deshmins, the critical guide of Aquilian and world restaurants. The book attributes a rank and a small explanation of the quality of cooking of every major restaurant in Aquilia and a few foreign ones. While the world is no stranger to culinary critique, the exhaustive exhaustivity of the guidance method of secret undercover culinary critique has surprised many cooks. Louis de, Ch de Chimens, born Louis de Galarza, has been the mastermind of the work. The Terran born de Galarza, family is well known in that region for its winery, traditional cheese making, as well as hosting yearly tasting contests of cheeses. Louis de Chimens, the new head of the family, has continued the tradition but was always known to be an eccentric. After Tarun reunited with Aquilia proper, the visionary Louis, or Louis, set out to transform the family business and tradition, gathering a small posse of fellow culinary connoisseurs. He embarked on a great trip where, in disguise, they sampled various restaurants and ranked them according to a plethora of criteria. The guide is a result of their work. The guide already seems to be reshaping the world of fine dining as many restaurants have seen their customers vanishing or, on the contrary, turning out in droves based on the guide's critique. In response to the success of his book, Deshmens has already promised to update his guide every year. Now all cooks and restaurateurs 
in the world. Are haunted by a question. Who among their clients could be Deshimen's inspectors? According to some, it could be any one of them. Oh, kind of among us, huh? It could be you. It could be me. Oh, man. I, I, I'm not going to say anything else besides that. I don't want to be too cringy, so. All right. All right, all right, all right. Nice. Reach across party lines, my friends. Now is not a time for Aquilians to fight amongst themselves about more delicate matters of policy. We are here to bring together the nation and go forward into a new age. We will bring together all the deputies we can find who will support our message of unity and begin to implement our reforms. More stability and harmony support, which is great. I love it. And actually, you know what? I'm going to say, it, and I normally don't do this, but I'm going to spend the three city factories, the 25 political power, so we get... 13 rubber, which we do need. And 13 is quite a bit, but look at that. We have a full through such slot. Thank you, Superior Firepowers, and thank you, devs. I do appreciate you guys, the devs, reaching out to me for to showcase this on the channel. But the table bill. The Assemblée Nationale is in the midst of a budgetary debate over the gastronomical matters. While the press has largely mocked the debate, the chamber does need to have its own mess hall to make sure that the debates are not unduly interrupted at dinner time. Three plans have been proposed. Funding a parliamentary restaurant, giving the deputies a food and beverages allowance, and finally funding a basic mess hall. Under the first plan, a wing of the Assemblée Nationale's building would be set aside to become a luxurious restaurant. While it would obviously please the deputies the most, it would also become a place to host special guests and improve the prestige of the institution. Under the allowance plan, each deputy would have to go out to the town's restaurants and cafes to eat. This would undoubtedly please the capital's gastronomical businesses and would allow us to not have to deal with the logistics of a restaurant. However, some have pointed out that it could distract the deputies from their work or allow lobbyists to wind and dine with them. Finally, the mess hall plan has mostly been put forward by a coalition of socialist, religious conservatives and some other frugal representatives. They argued that the nation's elite should remain sitting citizens and not a gilded elite. As such, the parliamentary mess hall would serve reasonable meals that could be served to simple workers. It is safe to say that most deputies wouldn't take such an option in stride. We have been urged to weigh in. Bon appétit, messieurs les députés. Give them an allowance and be done with it. They will eat what they get in their plates. Um, I do want to maximize harmony as much as possible, so this will reduce the cooldown of all political decisions. As much as I love the PP, I think we're doing pretty darn well with 1.58 pretty much every single day, which is actually really awesome. National education effort. She looked around her stop at the small village she had arrived in, holding on to her hat as the wind picked up. When she had volunteered to participate in the NEE, she'd hoped for a job in Rila or maybe Vinovia. A rural or Orvalio hadn't really entered her mind and she was deep enough in thought that she didn't even notice a farmer coming up to her before he asked if she was a new teacher. Oh yes, she said, hurriedly collecting herself, Adrian Hirondel. Pleased to meet you. She shook his claw with a smile. Would I impose if I asked you where the school building is located? Pero la Croix. And not at all, madame, the farm gruff responded hurriedly. In fact, I can take you there right now. It's right up this road. Should I take your bags? If it's not too much of a hassle, thank you. The two began up the road through the small village and Adrian found her... or Adrian. Adriana. Adriana. We'll call her Adriana. Found herself uh, nigh bombarded with facts about the village. There lived the Bolshines, whose grandfather had planted oaks and had left them this acorn kings of the village. The old Griffiness watched them, watching them from the bench outside her home was Madame Villiot, who knew what everyone was up to always. The griff that was, un was repairing the roof on the house by the brook was Damien Laval, currently unmarried in case Madame wondered. By the time they got to the school building, Adriana's head was already spinning. Well, this will be an interesting stay. Oh, we replaced mass illiteracy with broad illiteracy. We love being broad. Nice. More support. So is weekly stability, stability always going to be like that? Minus 0.9? Are we always incredibly unstable every week? That seems a bit weird, but... Uh, see, I guess now communists are all the rage. So, work with them. Not aligned. Hmm. Oh, my finger slipped. Oh, well. Well, actually, we'll lose some stability from that. Oh, well. Now we can get up to 191. Was it worth it? Probably not, really. Actually, we have daily change. We do technically get more, slightly more daily army support, so it is what it is. Um, Whip the parties. Whip, whip. Hmm. We do have 200 support, so I think we're doing pretty darn well. So, uh, redefine the tax code. Ooh, daily political power gain? Sure, why not? Currently, our nation's tax code is all over the place, with there being roughly 63 different tax laws overlapping across all layers of society. This will not do. We shall come together as a nation and redefine all tax obligations for every Aquilian citizen. This will hopefully both increase revenue and decrease the bureaucratic bloat, bringing a much-needed boost in revenue. So they will, this will alienate quite a few more people, which is not very good, but hey, it is what it is. 
and work with them, but we'll get so far off, and commission the Electrification Rural. Many parts of rural Quilio still lack full electrical connection. As one of Grifonia's premier nations, this cannot remain. We will embark on a campaign to connect electricity to the entirety of the nation. Opening new lands to industry and development, however, it's an expensive plan and will cost us some, some, more, some support amongst more financially conscious deputies, or those who don't think it goes far enough. Good, and what are we at now? Uh, oh, still 200. Oh, there you go. Whip the party? Uh, we can do that. Doesn't seem too bad. I don't know our stability, but... Uh, which one's the highest one? Supremacy. We'll do the supremacy one. Why not? Curtail the supremacists. And then we'll uh, increase ourselves here as well. A little bit more. Not bad. And let's go ahead and grab... Captain of Entry is actually not too bad. Deal Broker is okay. Um, mm, that's okay as well. Kindly Enigma. Yeah, that's pretty good. I, I like that one actually a lot. Quite a bit. Oh, look at all this. Oh, this is unique. I love the... Oh, what is that? More monthly population, less resources to market. More... Oh, you get more... Oh. I love it. That You know, I've said this before. And... But it's just... You know the devs really care about their game. Or their mod. When they have unique industrial concerns, material designers, aircraft designers, and ship designers. Now... These aren't, like, extremely special, but it does show you how much love the devs put in, into the mod, so I do appreciate that so much. It's the little things that make it special. And let's whip the party. Let's get some more deputies back. After this, modernize the labor laws. While we're not socialists by any means, we recognize that it is the responsibility of the state to protect its workers through the legislative process. A new Aquilian labor code shall be drafted in order to provide legal protections for the rights of laborers as well as their unions. And unfortunately, however, this code is opposed by many in the Assembly as either going too far or not far enough. Well, so we'll alienate more people, whatever. We get code du travail, more political power, stability, factory output, acceptance of communist ideology or diplomacy. Cool. 1.64 every day. Radio is done, my friends. Good. Yeah, let's get some of that, too. Happy 1009, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. Um, Defect from a coalition. Uh, work with these guys. Meh. 185 is still not bad. I and mean, we were losing stability, but whatever. Comet sighted. The appearance of a bright comet in the night sky caused a panic among the griffins of our nation. Some of them believe that the comet is an omen of the end of the world or that the penalty of all of our deeds will soon come. May the gods be merciful. Boreas, protect us. Make a sacrifice to Ma. Why do I have so many stupid griffins in my nation? Because we love them. A long game vetter. Or wetter. Ooh, refineries. Screw it. Let's get some more fuel. I love fuel. Alright. That's fine. We can do this one too. Improved machine tools. And let's grab some more research speed. Thank you. Wow, 304 days. Oh, baby boy. That's a lot of days. And we got a couple days left for that one, so... Literacy rates soar. Remy Lacroix, hmm, has been anxious for weeks, but he had done his best to carry out the duty Madame Herondel had given him. She had, in no uncertain terms, told him that as the oldest child in the class, he was now the prefect, and that his word was law. He was responsible for keeping order in class, and if he told the teacher that any student had, was, had misbehaved, they'd be punished right away, and his word would trump theirs. Remy was honored. He really was, but he was also terrified. What if he misunderstood something? What if he got a classmate punished for the wrong reasons? He hadn't told on anyone to Madame Herondel all week, instead talking directly with the others. At the most, he had threatened with telling the teacher they didn't stop fighting. But other than that, he shied away from the power that he had been given. If he misused it, Madame would be angry at him. Madame Herondel, meanwhile, was at her wit's end. When she had appointed Remy Prefect, she had expected the power to go to his head. It was one of the things she was supposed to do she didn't agree with. Was not Remy meant to be an equal to his classmates? Why put him in a position like this? And yet this chick had stepped as lightly as a feather, treating his powers with a prudence that she doubted even the president and could muster. Leaning back in her seat, she looked down at the paper filled with Remy's writing, where her red markings were few and far between. She couldn't stop herself from smiling. What a little star he was, this boy. Oh, the places you'll go. Cool. But that name. Hmm. Modest illiteracy? I love modest illiteracy. <sighs> it's very good to have. Compared to what we had earlier. Factory output would not be bad. You know what? I'll leave this decision up for you guys. Should we go with messenger enchantments? And, or should we go with quick hitters? Let me know in the comments below for this specific part of the campaign. Um, if we do, you know, the other paths as well, we might do something else. So let me know which path we should take. Because I like leaving a lot of the chance up to you guys. So, yeah, that's not bad. More soft attacks is pretty good. But it is 1009. Let's make sure that we can get to the next level of guns soon enough. 
Modernize our labor laws. And now we're at 135. Oh, man, that, that kind of hurt us. All right, cool. So, reclaim the periphery. So we need 200 deputies. Oh, we can actually go to war with a lot of people. I like that a lot. I like going to war. Oh, we're finished with the Colbert reforms. We should probably do that. The Ministry of Colbert was a strange time. By welcoming back the bright minds that have fled the counter-revolution, Colbert both weakened his prestige of the monarchy and yet offered it prosperity. His early death marked the end of many of his reforms and caused the chaos of 1008. Now, it's time to resume his works. Increase our society development level. Oh, maybe we should have gotten rid of that earlier. Yeah, that's not very good for us. Cool. More civvies, please. More civvies. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, I want to save these nations, these tiles, these nations, these places for, uh, not even doctors. You know what? I gotta say this for the devs. You guys have done a great job making this game run so fast. Like, like, don't, don't get me wrong. I've got, like, a really good CPU, like, a really good CPU to play Hoi 4. Um, but, like, holy cow, like, it is just, this is probably one of the fastest mods I've ever seen. Even better than some mods that I've seen that have, you know, a little bit of content for a few different nations at a time. So this runs extremely fast. Holy cow. Maybe it's just my computer, but still, like, holy crud, this is awesome. Mm, I did want this one. Less resources to market, but more daily pickle power, which isn't that much, but it helps us with our industry, monthly population, and stability, so. Very nice. I like generous gift. Oh, okay. Envoys from the small but wealthy city state of Florina arrived today in Aquila. They did not come alone, but with a considerable escort with many heavily armed guards. They are protecting numerous chests which were brought before us and opened. Inside were all kinds of wonders, not only glittering gold and jewelry, but also vibrantly colored cloth and fragrant perfumes stored in gorgeous glass jars. The envoy said this was all a gift for us, intended to show that Florina wished to develop our relationship and bring an end to any disputes between us. They look forward together to further cooperation in the future and said we could benefit from it greatly. Thank you, and we'll think about it. Awesome. That's actually... Wow! Plus 20% political power gain and consumer goods factors goes down by 5%? Whoa! That's really good. Holy crud. Crud, crud, crud. Okay, so we now we got to improve our divisions. We'll just go to try to... We need way more artillery for this. Holy bad daddies. Okay, maybe not yet. We do want a lot of artillery, but I think we're going to have to wait first. Never mind. I lied. We're going to go straight into it. Cool. Actually, do we have anything over here, too? Oh, we did... Mm, what do you get mage companies? I love, actually, anti-air now. Anti-air is a lot of fun to use, but for now, let's do that. Do we have any mage companies? Oh, that's just support equipment stuff. You know what? Screw it. Put it on there. Put it on our tab. You guys should all, except for you and you, become that. We use one doctrine here, one type of division template, because I am a very simple person. Probably way too simple. Oh, we do have anti air, but not nearly enough. Okay, let's do that one. Wow. Take that off. Do we need to take that off? No, not actually, no. Oh, very cool. These guys are killing each other. And someone did say Aquilians have the best equipment icons. That was one of the comments as well from yesterday's. So, finish the culprit reforms. Very, very good. Oh. Let's embark on various economic projects. Ooh, tools. Oh, what is that? The city report in Quilla. Whoa. Whoa. That's not bad. I kind of like that. Man, there's so much here. Political power gain? Oh, you you say political power, and I get very interested. The rebirth of Aquila. In the aftermath of 1008, House Griff's project of transforming our capital into a cité splendeur, as he calls it, has had to shut down. Now it is time for us to get back to work and decide on the future of Aquila. Awesome. 108? Yeah, that's not bad, but not great. Yaki Yaki Stan? Okay. How, how, how's everyone looking over here? They haven't killed each other yet, so we gotta wait, I guess. Wow. Griffonian Empire? They're probably gonna be a little bit difficult to take out. But that's alright. Improve infantry equipment. Thank you. And we'll grab some of this, too. Alright, up next. Um, probably need to raise the construction level, honestly. Reliability. More heart attacks? Okay. So, I like the soft attack. I like a lot of soft attack. Reliability is not bad, but... That's not bad to get. Plane-wise, we do need to think about planes. We are using tactical bombers, so it would probably be best to use these guys if we wanted that, but this is probably best to use as well. Let's go with that one immediately. Keep building, building, building. Love it. 180, huh? Fluina seeks our protection. 
Bruno no de Rosebrun and other representatives of the government of Florina have arrived in Aquila and wish to meet with Cecilia Cadro in person. Several hours pass by as they discuss the diplomatic matters. Florina is small and weak, and they know it, but we can be strong enough to protect them from our rivals who gladly seize the city's wealth for themselves. It is true that we cannot allow our trade partner to fall into the greedy claws of our enemies, but it's also true that defending them might end up not being worthwhile. At the end of the meeting, Cecilia Cadro told them their request would be seriously considered. Now, it is time for us to decide how we respond for their plea to aid. Um, uh, uh, is that Flavina? Where, where is Flavina? Oh! Hmm. Pomovara. Are they in a faction? We technically are the Entente. So. And these guys are independent. So, you know what? It's not worthwhile. But it might get us into a war. Which might be good. They already paid for us, so. This is probably a mistake. I'm probably going to regret this, maybe. We'll see. Um, Agricultural Modernization Committee. Colbert had long lamented at how outdated the Aquilian agriculture was, but the question was incredibly sensitive since King Morissette had to walk a fine line between containing both former serfs and the land-owning nobility. Now that the situation is settled, we can finally modernize the countryside. Very nice. And we're going to whip the party. A city reborn once the city was divided. Th there were narrow streets, the homes of the workers, and nary did anyone else seek passage through them. They were broad lands, the, realm, the realms of the mighty, and nary did the ordinary people linger among them. Now the this has changed. For all have been brought together. Street lamps light up the dark corners, and water flows effortlessly from reservoirs to buildings to sewers, regardless of the neighborhood. Bus routes and tram lines ride along restored roads to bring the people closer to each other. Medium-sized buildings at the edges of neighborhoods mediate between the grand edifices of the elite and the simple domiciles of the common folk. And all partake of the common activity, the shared exchange and enjoyment of all the fruits of their labor, and that these buildings enable. Parks along the byways and street, side streets bring nature, however small a slice, to all who pass by so that even in the midst of their days, both worker and manager, peasant and patrician, might enjoy the same sun that shines upon all and the same trees that stand guard over all. Magnifique. Magnifique. Bueno, bueno. Which I don't think they say that in French. But you never know. You never know. How's uh, compliance doing down here? Oh. Oh. Oh, it's looking good. Compliance is looking really good. Huh. That's really good compliance. I'm not going to lie. That's really good compliance. It's so good. We don't have to worry about it at all. Oh, okay. We need just a few more. I'm going to wait because we still have to do all this stuff anyway. So. Material designer. Oh. Do we get one more here? Maybe not. I like the soft attack, but maybe start thinking about ships. I love Carrie's capital ships. Destroyer production costs. They're already so easy to make. So. Oh, Buffalo Chiefdom. Goodbye, Buffalo Chiefdom. Now I want some Buffalo sauce. Mmm. Cool. After this one, uh, military factories, construct railways. I love railways. All this stuff seems okay. The stuff on the right side. Ooh, supply consumption goes down though. I love things like that that actually give you like bonuses to combat. Cause blueprints are nice and all, but that's not bad either. But still, like uh, more attack. I like that too. Ooh, you get more rubber. Third branch of the military. Ooh, more resources. Look at that. Oh, man, there's so much we want to do. Oh, we get more daily air XP. That's not bad either, but there's so much I want to do, guys. There's so much I want to do. Illiteracy rates at an all-time low. You misunderstand me, Madame Herondel interrupted Remy. She had to come by his house out of the blue and saying all she wanted to talk about was his performance at school. And it all had left him scared, and the only ones more nervous than Remy at the moment seemed to be his parents, who were almost falling over themselves to be good hosts. I'm not asking what you feel is expected of you, she told him gently. I'm asking you what you want to do when you grow up. What is your heart's desire? I, Remy, was floored. The idea that he could choose what he wanted to do in life was hard for him to grasp. He had never thought of it, and in the end, he had to lower his head in shame. I'm sorry, madame, I don't know. Madame Herondel uh, smiled kindly at the answer, though. What is he, me? The important thing is this, Remy. You can choose, she told him. You are a studious and intelligent young griff, and I am sincerely convinced that you can go anywhere that your heart desires to. Wherever you go, I will help you get there. Can can we, can we I have a week to think, Remy asked, Madame Herondel nodding. You can have as many weeks as you need. Nice. We have limited illiteracy. Seriously, trying to decide what you want to do in life can, it's so incredibly, can be quite difficult if you don't know what you want to do. So, And you know what? I probably still don't know what I want to do. Yeah, I'm getting old, though. All right. Very nice. Ah, reclaim the periphery. Aquilia was once a great kingdom, and now we shall make it an even greater republic. The lands to our north are rifle Aquilian provinces, ruled now by a motley collection of misguided griffins and tyrants. We must bring them into the enlightened rule of the republic, and let all experience true freedom. Greifald, Ferezera, Pomorova. I might just take these guys off first, just because they're independent, so that probably would be good. Greifald, they're all independent, so 
Hopefully they don't have an alliance. They're not in a faction, so you should be able to take them out pretty easily. But you'll we'll have to wait and see what happens. Ah, uh, radio. I love it, love it, love it, love the radio. I listen to the radio all the time, actually. 215. Very good. Oh, look at that. The Gary Law. Nice. Very nice. Actually, how are you guys looking? Not bad. Send you three over here as well. Oh, it's not like we have a lot of artillery in reserve, but it's looking slightly better. That's going to take so long to make that stuff, though. Cool. Keep making more factories the faster we make. Oh, wow. We have a lot more factories in these states. Honestly, it takes so much longer for us to actually, like, <laughs> read focuses than, um, you know, actually get through the mod. So, I love it. Democracy propels. Oh, wow. We're putting Empire, though, but nobody. No, these guys over here. Cool. Reclaim the Prefery. A united Quilia. Bypass a national assembly and complete one political national focus without having to acquire the support of the appropriate amount of deputies. Daily harmony support. Anti monopoly laws. Cool. Provides tax codes. Integrate. Can be cored by the Republic if average compliance of occupied state reaches 40%. That's actually why we already carved this stuff. Nice. Let's do this one. Finally, Aquilia's own blood brothers, those griffins of the periphery, are once again united with their homeland and we can bask in the same freedoms that embraces their country griffs. With this unification, our popularity is on the rise amongst the population, and we should easily be able to get some more legislation through the assembly riding on our new popularity. I love it. Are they guaranteed by anybody? Because I would like to just hammer people home. Ooh. Ships? We actually made another capital ship. Nice. Um, go ahead and train these guys too. Do we have any more planes? Do we have any air bases? We are really lacking in air bases here. Holy smoky daddies. Go up to 100. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, so we have 50 and then that. That's not great. But you guys go right here and maybe duplicate yourselves if you can. Uh, do we have another set of 100? We do. Awesome. Make sure everyone has at least 100. Or uh, trying to get at least 100. That'll be good. Up next, what do we do? Oh, right at the conscription level. <laughs> That's the most immediate thing we have to do, so. Not bad. And I guess... Well, no one's complaining about it. Well, we don't really have that volunteer, so... What type of division do they have? Jules de Bois. Jules de Bois, you will never attack Florina. You go bye-bye right now. Actually, ooh. Yeah, I'll take some... Yeah, new, the Commonwealth New Maryland? Nice. They have up to eight divisions, apparently. And they're... Nice! They're dead! Oh, we can't take everything. All sucks. Hello, senors. Or, uh, monsieurs. Not senors. They don't say that usually too often in France. As far as I know. I've never been in France, so... Um, okay, what's up next? Greifwald Fazera? What is this? This is Aldert, which is... Is that one of them? Yes, it is. But that's over a river, which is kind of sucky to attack. How strong is Count Greifwald? They're not aligned? Count... We kind of like each other, not that many divisions. We should be able to have a good old one, two, tussle with my shoe type of deal here. Alright, guys. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's get up at least one airbase right here. Just one. Because we still have to build ourselves up quite quickly. Anything else here? No, not really. Like probably Greifenheim? Mm, actually, with this one, what do we get from this? 20 more army XP. For seven days, let's go to war first, and maybe we can do well here. Do we make the airbase yet? It doesn't look like it. Oh, we did. Look at that. Let's go. Let's click on this. We're going to use it, and then just go to war immediately. So we should give us quite a bit more army XP then. How many divisions do they have? Oh, the Hoi Pork glitches. Why? We can't see well, how many are. Well, they're 8 to 13,000, so it's dropping. Overall, I think we're doing quite well. I mean, we did, did try to make our divisions a little thicker. A united Quilio. Integrate the periphery. While it may take some time for the Griffins of the periphery to get used to living under Quilian rule again, they will soon embrace the freedom we offer them with open wings. We will bring cultural and economic prosperity to them, as well as political freedom. What is there that is not to love? Nice. Jam up that uh, daily compliance factor, my friends. Because right now... In Pomerova, it's only 3% on average, but 0.5 jumps up to 0.6. I like it. Castle Lundlings, what do you mean? <gasps> I'll tell you. Get more cryptology? Why not? A litter populace. Have you decided, Madame Herondel asked Remy. Sitting in her living room, he rocked slowly back and forth on the chair as he tried to decide how to say it. I read the newspaper you lent me, Madame, he began, stumbling a little over his words. I read about the Parliament and think I realize what I want to do. I 
I want to become a politician. I want to learn how the laws work and make them better for everyone. If I live here, I can help my neighbors. But in Parliament, I can help everyone in the country. President Lacroix, Madame Horon Dell said, nodding to herself and making Remy almost fall off the chair at the thought. You'll, that'll be very hard road to walk, she cautioned him. You need top grades from a fine university, as well as both experience and contacts. Remy nodded at her explanation, listening attentively. The first step will be lycée, she continued, and you'll need to be active in the political clubs as well. Use that time to decide where you want to go next. Law will be a good choice at université. When you are there, you will know better than what I do, or what I to do. She smiled wildly at him. I'll start writing a recommendation for you right away. You'll have it tomorrow. Now go home and tell your parents where they will see you in 30 years. <laughs> Thank you, madame, uh, Remy exclaimed, almost leaping off his chair to head home. Good goodbye, madame. As he walked home, he thought of what she had said. He adjusted his bag, letting the strap hang diagonally over his chest like the presidential sash he, as he looked at it. The thought made him almost tip-tap with glee as he hurried home to tell his parents, President Lacroix, President Lacroix. Nice, negligible illiteracy. This is awesome. I, I think this... Aquilia is a really good nation to play as. As, as far as I can tell, because it, it's, it's fun, it's not too difficult. The revolution wasn't too bad, it was pretty easy for us, at least for this time. Maybe it would be more difficult in the future, especially if we put on a historical, but... It's uh, pretty good, I'd say. Pretty darn good. Oh, this has a lot of uh, rivers here. Oh, that sucks. But that is okay. And you know what? I like that this, this episode also has a little bit of conflict. There you go. 2.43 oh, two, uh, two political power every single day. Thank you, Flowina. Thank you. Whip the party. Weapon in shape. Actually, I don't think we can get any more support. That's all right. And we're out of political power. But not to worry, my friends, not to worry. Eventually, we will have more than enough political power, or manpower, I should really say, because, well, we're going to core a lot of states. It's not co being cored yet, but we're working on it. With no manpower, can we move in? Oh, we're struggling here. That is not a bueno. There you go. Help them out. Oh, and since we're here, don't want to forget. Oh, we could get war bonds. Oh, actually... Let's get some more propaganda. I do want to do this as well. So, magical training standardization. Mage company, more breakthrough, piercing, organization, expo, expo, Yes. No questions asked. Oh, the matches of Tarin. The Quillings march? You bet we march. Um, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Um, yeah. Because it, it's already done. The liberation of Lointainu. Okay. Can be cored. That's not bad. Let's do some anti-monopoly laws. More daily political power, perhaps. Looking back to the days of the loyal tyranny, or royal tyranny, we see that the monarch often employed massive corporations to oppress the common griff into what was, in its essence, slave labor. We must create a fair business and working environment that all griffs will be able to operate in without fear of mega corporations driving them out of markets or abusing them as laborers. Very cool. <clears throat> mm, proof working conditions, more stability, maybe land stuff. Oh, uh, we... Mm, okay. Just in case. It just only hurts uh, training time, so... Overall, pretty darn nicely. Oh. I guess I'm doing that. Thank you. Merci. You know, give me two of you guys. Just to make sure that this army is fully stacked and we're ready to go. Nice. Oh, a little bit of manpower. Look at that. Three, two, one. Let's have a good time with uh, County of Adelaide. That was kind of cool. Wood. Goodbye, Wood. The city of Florina offers to buy gold. A messenger from the city managed to get to Aquila tonight while avoiding the active war zone. He delivered us a secret offer from the wealthy banking families of his home city. They would buy gold from our treasury, no matter how we acquired it, and pay in liquid cash, which we could then invest in our war economy. It's an interesting offer, which we should consider accepting. We didn't need cash for the war effort. For a year, we get more construction speed. Keep your greedy claws um, from our gold. Uh, yeah, no, I want to keep our gold. We're, we're doing pretty darn well, I'd say, for now. Maybe in the future, you offer that to us. And we might accept. But for now, I think we're kind of okay. Oh, we're actually losing there. That's not good. Mac 10s? 40s? Okay, they're Mac 40s. Magical weapons. Ooh, do I use magical weapons? I usually don't use them. I'm not really experienced using them. It seems like we may also want to maybe get some field hospitals maybe eventually too. So maybe we'll go with that. Yes? No? Maybe so? We have 41,000. Holy crap. Holy crap, we're doing well. 
The Griffonian Republic has invited us to the Republican Pact. We've been invited by the Griffonian Republic to join the Republican Pact, a military, economic, and political alliance that aims to unite all Griffin republics against foreign aggression. In the event of invasion, they would lend us a claw, or if they are attacked, we would be obliged to aid them in turn. Mm, we cannot agree on a full alliance, but we will agree on mutual guarantees. We are better off on our own. Ooh. Ooh. With the route we went. We're... Uh, let's see. Limit the power of the executive. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, do we do this or do we not? Oh, man. Obviously, this will have ramifications like for other campaigns if we actually do them. Uh, you know what? I'll end the episode here, then. I'll leave this up to you guys. What should we do? Should we, for this campaign specifically, this part of the campaign for Harmony, should we not join them and appreciate their help and guarantee each other? Or should we be better off on our own? Let me know in the comments below. Really, we cannot agree to a full alliance, obviously. Which one should we do? We're better off on our own or this one? As well as, do we literally go on our own? Or, the Cloudberry Connection, if... It looks like we can do this one as well. So, we can do either one. Let me know. One of these two, or one of these two. But regardless, we're going to end the episode here. If you enjoyed it, do please consider leaving a like. It'll help me out. And help out the channel. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow, when we will decide what our fate will be. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.